you've actually got to be shitting me that I started this podcast. Like I barely pressed the record button. Ooh, I got the heebie-jeebies right now. <sighs> there is a spider in the corner of my room. I heard it plop. I don't know where the fuck it came from, but I heard it plop. That's how big the spider is. We're going to be talking about the love languages today in this podcast episode. And you want to know what my love language is? My love language is when my boyfriend comes and kills spiders for me. <laughs> because I... <coughs> it's not even that I can't kill them. It's that I like actually like start gagging from the chest. Um, quick commercial break <laughs> while I try to go figure this out. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Self Love Archives. I'm your host, Julia Salvia, and yeah, I am very scared of spiders. <laughs> I think now that I have a significant other, a boyfriend, or someone else living with me, I don't feel as though I need to be this very masculine being who takes care of those things. <laughs> So now the full scaredy cat feminine side of me has has really come to the surface and every, oh, there is an uncomfortable chill that goes through my entire body whenever I see any sort of bug, but mostly a spider. <laughs> In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the love languages. The love languages are all about how we want to be loved and how we love others and how others want to be loved and how they love us. I have a story that's perfect for everything that just conspired in the beginning of this episode <laughs> that has to do with spiders from someone that I dated, my actually like my very first official boyfriend, I guess you could say. I am hosting an event. <laughs> I am so excited to welcome myself back essentially into the event space. I used to host events all the time and I loved it so much. But then, you know, one thing led to another, aka COVID, and I haven't hosted an event in a while. And I said to myself before 2024 happened that in 2024, I would host more events or I would host events with the self-love archives and I am hosting my first event with Flor Demur in Ocean Township, New Jersey. So if you are coming from afar or you are in the area, I would absolutely love for you to be there. I am inviting you to come. I don't need to tell you how amazing this event is going to be because if you follow me on any of my socials, you know that I have I have not stopped talking about it and I've been sharing sneak peeks on my socials. <laughs> but if I have to convince you, let me convince you. All of the information is going to be in the show notes, in my description. It's my link in bio. If you cannot find it, which I'm sure you could find it, but if you cannot find it, I will happily directly send it to you via DM and then we can just chat about all the things. So please DM me if you can't find it, but it is in the show notes. I said that I was going big for my birthday this month and I did not lie because I'm going big by hosting this event and I'm doing a million other things, but I'm hosting this event because I want to celebrate with you guys. I'm turning 30. That's, that's like a big freaking thing. That's a big thing. We're going to talk about that all day long, but at this event, when you go to purchase a ticket, you get to choose between tarot. So if you want to, you know, see your future, see what the cards have in store for you, or you can choose hair tinsel, which is just the cutest little glittery pieces in your hair. Like it's, it's a whole vibe, but not only that, so you get to choose one or the other of those when you purchase a ticket, but everything else that you get with this ticket at this event, the list goes on and on ear seating. Licensed acupuncturist will be there to do ear seating. It is, it's actually so cute because it's like a little rhinestone bead, so it almost looks like you have piercings, but ear seating is a form of acupuncture that helps with different, different things like digestion, stress. Also at the event, just in case you're hungry, which you won't be, there are tons of sweets there is this amazing cake artist that is making a cake for this event and I, I I gave her full creative freedom. Like I'm so excited to see what she comes up with. We are also going to have a ton of treats. Did you think that this was going to be a New Jersey event without bagels? 
do, is there ever a brunch or a breakfast without bagels? Because I think not. There will be bagels. There will be yummy stuff. And my favorite part is that there will be a mimosa bar and there will be a coffee bar. I curated two different lattes, ice lattes, with one of my favorite coffee shops in the Monmouth County area. And oh, wait till you try these, you're going to die. Well, not literally, hopefully. You're just gonna like, you know, fall in love a little bit more, which that's what the Self Love Archives is all about, right? Loving yourself more. In addition to the event, Florida Mer, because there are flower shops, of course it would make sense that you would also get the opportunity to make a bouquet of flowers. And they're a cool flower shop, okay? Every part of their space is so vibey, is so photogenic. Like you are gonna get the best photos of your life. I actually bought digital cameras that we can all take pictures on and then of course, going to send you all those pictures, but it's going to be a great time. And then the best piece of this event. I mean, there's every piece is amazing, but there's also a goodie bag. If I didn't need to convince, if that already did not convince you, there's going to be a goodie bag. I called up and emailed all of the beauty and wellness brands that I have worked with in the past or that I love and appreciate and want them a part of this. And I asked them, do you want to be a part of my 30th birthday goodie bag? to give back to all of you guys and so many of them said yes and that goodie bag is going to be so bomb we have some brands like it cosmetics poopery we have a bunch of small businesses also in the area that are providing vouchers and, and coupons and things like that for their services oh and of course it's sponsored by the Self Love Archives. So you're gonna go home with the cutest bag. I'm just like, I, I can't, I'm, I'm so over the moon, I'm so excited, and I hope that you guys can make it. So if I didn't convince you enough, please feel free to DM me so I can talk your ear off and we can become best friends, okay? As I said before, all of the information is in my show notes. It's in my link in bio. But if you want to DM me, you could totally do that too. I could talk about this all day and how excited I am, but I know you're here for the episode. So buy your ticket and then come back for the episode and let's talk about the love languages. So when I was 17, I had a boyfriend. So my ex-boyfriend from when I was like a kid and he told me he had arachnophobia, which is the a very serious fear of spiders. And I genuinely thought that he was joking. <laughs> So there was this very like sketchy, like very sketchy, but small pet shop in a shopping plaza. And I remember we had gone there uh, just to look at pets, I guess. And there was a tarantula in a case. Like as we were walking down the aisle, there was just like a tarantula like in a box or something like that, like in a clear box. And he completely did not see it. So as we were walking through the pet store, I said, hey, turn to your side. He sees the spider and I have never seen someone run out of a store or run that fast in my entire life. And of course I'm giggling, I'm laughing because I don't think that his phobia of spiders is really that real. Turns out I am very wrong because I go out into the parking lot and he is pacing in the parking lot, <laughs> like pacing back and forth with like basically his hands in his face, freaking out. <laughs> and in this moment, I felt kind of bad, <laughs> but I was still like laughing. He's like, I told you I have arachnophobia. And I was like, I didn't think you were serious. I just thought you didn't like spiders. He's like, no, I have arachnophobia. Anyways, touche Spider-Man, as my dad likes to call him. <laughs> because now I have arachnophobia for sure. <laughs> Though I don't sprint out of the room when I do see a spider. So maybe it's not technically arachnophobia. Maybe it's like level one. His was like level five. <laughs> well, I hope he's getting over that fear of spiders. And I hope that you have someone in your life that if you also have a fear of spiders, they step up to the plate and they kill or catch those spiders for you, whichever way you want to go about it. 
My saying is you don't belong in this home. And if there is not a safe way for me to take you out of it without touching you, then I can't help you. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Happy Galentine's Day. We're just a couple of days up until, it's a couple of days before Galentine's Day, a couple of days before Valentine's Day. And even if you don't have a significant other or someone to give your love to this Valentine's Day, I hope that you have some room, whether you do or you don't, to give that love to yourself or to give some love to yourself this season. I know that Valentine's Day is seen as honestly, we could say this about any holiday, that it's just seen as a big corporation's way to make a ton of money off of you. Sure, go ahead, make a ton of money off of me. That is totally okay as long as I get to enjoy the vibes, the aesthetic, the music, the love, the excitement of this holiday. I don't, hear, I don't care, here, take my money. Take it, take it, it's fine, take it. No, seriously, take it. <laughs> I love all holidays. I kept thinking this year, and I it feels so good to say that because I kept thinking this year as each holiday went by, like Halloween and then Christmas and New Year's is okay. Like New Year's is just like one of those holidays for me. I never really got the chance or have had the chance to really celebrate New Year's. So hopefully one day I will have the opportunity to celebrate New Year's the way you're supposed to celebrate New Year's. But Valentine's Day, all of the holidays, like those main three holidays. Oh, I skipped over Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. But even, but honestly, even Thanksgiving. I felt like this year, every time a holiday passed, I was so happy and excited to celebrate it. And I think it's because I am finally in a comfortable, beautiful space that I get to call home. And that feels, that just feels like, that feels really good. It feels really good. So Valentine's Day is here and I am excited to celebrate Valentine's Day. I feel like I have been celebrating Valentine's Day along with celebrating my birthday and packing in this February with so many amazing things and it's pretty freaking exciting. So February is the season of love and every February I get super excited to talk about the love languages because I really feel this is something that we all should really understand about ourselves and about the people that we love around us because it can really help us love each other better. So this theory of the five love languages was created by Gary Chapman, I believe. At least Gary Chapman is the one who wrote the book, The Love Languages, or Five Love Languages. Let's dive into the five different love languages and what they mean, and maybe we can figure out what your love languages are. So the five different love languages are physical touch, gifts, quality time, acts of service, and words of affirmation. So all pretty explanatory, right? So if we're talking about, let's say, coffee. If it's words of affirmation, that's going to be like someone saying to you, I love this coffee so much. Like complimenting, providing words of affirmation. If it's the love language of gift, it's like someone buying you a coffee. They're giving you a gift. An act of service would be making a cup of coffee for you. Quality time would be spending time together maybe at a coffee shop. And the last one, physical touch, could be something like holding hands while you're at a coffee shop. There are different tests that you can take to figure out what love language is yours, but essentially it's asking yourself the question, if someone does these things with me, for me, or to me, which of these are going to make me feel as though I'm loved by this person? So is that someone making you a cup of coffee? Does that make you feel loved? Or does it make you feel more loved if that person were to buy you? a cup of coffee? Or does the coffee not matter at all? What really matters is the quality time, the time that you're spending with each other at that coffee shop. Or does none of that matter and the only thing that really matters to you is the physical touch, the holding hands, the PDA, the hugging, 
that you experience on the way to the coffee shop with this person or at the coffee shop with this person? Or are you more appreciative and do you feel more loved when you're with this person that you care about at the coffee shop and they're complimenting you or telling you that they love this place that you took them to or that they love the way your hair looks today or the way your outfit looks today. A lot of us think that we only have one love language, that there's only one way for us to feel loved. I think that two things can be true at once. I think that you actually could potentially have all of the love languages. I think that you feel loved by every single one of the love languages, but it's kind of in a chronological order or a priority order. Like the number one thing that you need to feel loved is quality time. The second thing that you need to feel loved is gifts. Then the third and the fourth, maybe acts of service and words of affirmation are kind of equal to each other. But let's say physical touch, just you don't really need too much of it, but you know, a little bit is good here and there. So I think that there is a priority list of where all of the love languages fall for you. I don't think that you necessarily only have one love language. I think that you have all five, but they sit on a list of which one is the most important to you versus which is the least important to you. I read the five love languages book years and years ago. I don't even remember if I actually finished it, but I do believe I have the book somewhere in my room and maybe it would have been great if I read the book before I jumped onto this podcast with you but I I do feel like I talk about the love languages so much and enough to be able to sit here with you and confidently talk about the love languages hell I did a whole series on Instagram like with makeup and everything like I did a makeup for each love language and I talked about each love language in a little series it was actually so cute <laughs> so I feel pretty qualified to be talking about the love languages. I've gotten to know my love languages really, really well. And something that I don't think is talked about a lot is that there is our love languages, the way that I need or I want to be loved or you need and you want to be loved versus how you love other people. And I do think that those love languages usually are very different from each other. The top love languages for me are physical touch and quality time. They are at the top of the charts. A little bit right under that is going to be acts of service. And then at the bottom, I feel is tied with gifts and words of affirmation. Those two, those two to me are very specific, like you have to say something very specific in regards to words of affirmation for it to really mean something to me. And same thing with the gift. There really has to be a lot of thought put into that gift for it to really mean something to me. And I think that's a lot, uh, I think that's the case for a lot of people too, but I think in any case, how I want to be loved is through physical touch, like holding hands, sexual intimacy, like little kisses here and there, hugs here and there, like physical touch is everything to me. And then quality time, like actually spending dedicated time together, one-on-one -on -one time together where phones are put away and we're kind of just in this little bubble together talking and getting to know each other more or reminiscing on memory, memories and things like that. So those are the two love languages for me that are so important. Now, the ways that I love people are actually with gifts. So I love giving gifts. It's something that I just naturally do. And one of the ways that I love other people, in addition to that, I would also throw physical touch and acts of service. So you could see that one of the ways that I love to be loved is also one of the ways that I love to love. So you may have a love language that you need and want 
and how you want to be loved yourself, but also how you love outwardly towards other people, like how you love other people. So for me, that one is physical touch. I want physical touch, but I also give physical touch. But at the same time, I want quality time. It's very important for me to have quality time, but I don't always give quality time. When it comes to gifts, those are also on the opposite side of the spectrum. I give gifts, but I don't necessarily want to receive gifts. There are things that are just more, don't don't get me wrong, I don't not want to receive gifts, but there are just other things on the priority poll, the priority, the priority scale that I would appreciate and love so much more than receiving a gift. Ask yourself, what are your love languages? What are the ways that you want to be loved? And what are the ways that you love other people? It's so important to know these things because then you can really pinpoint some pain points maybe in the relationships that you have. Now, what do you do if there is a love language that is very important to you, but the person that you love or a person that you're in any sort of relationship with doesn't provide that love language for you. They don't love you in that way. I think there's a boundary or an understanding of respect of other people's love languages and how they love. For example, my dad used to always buy gifts for me And they were very thoughtful. Like it was always these little things here and there. It'd be my favorite cereal or the these makeup wipes that I would always use. And he wouldn't really say anything. He would just buy it and bring it over. And it was those little, little pieces of these little gifts that were honestly so would be meaningless to someone else but had so much meaning and so much depth in them because he was recognizing something that I loved or something that I really liked and he was buying it for me out of love because that was how he loved outwardly but to me those didn't mean as much as maybe it meant to him giving it to me because my top love language isn't gifts it's quality time and it's physical touch. So what would have meant more to me is a hug or possibly spending time going out for a coffee or going out to dinner together. But because I know the love languages and because I know who my dad was, I knew that that was his love language. That's how he showed he loved you. So even though in that moment, maybe that isn't the top priority of how, you know, the best ways that I feel loved, I could recognize that he is doing what he knows or what he feels is showing his love. Now, of course, when you're in this situation, what do you do if that continuously keeps on happening and the other love languages that are more important to you aren't fulfilled? You have a conversation about it. You talk about it. You tell the person, hey, I would love it if you complimented me more. Or I would love it if maybe you bought me more things or made me more things in regards to gifts. Or I'm hopeful that we'll spend more time together, more dedicated quality time together. Or I love it when you hold my hand. Maybe we should hold hands a little bit more. So it's having this conversation with this person that you love and this person that you care about or this person that you're in a relationship with and telling them how you feel loved. You're allowed to tell people how you feel loved. You're allowed to tell someone, hey, I feel more loved when you do X, Y, Z. If your love language is physical touch, you can say something like, hey, I feel more loved when you hold my hand, when we're walking outside. Or I feel more loved when you compliment me or you tell me things or you remind me that I'm beautiful or that I'm pretty if your love language is words of affirmation. That's where I think the love languages can come in handy because they can help you create boundaries and help you push yourself to share with the person that you love 
how you want to be loved. And you can pinpoint what these are and basically clearly state to them what you need. The way that you love outwardly, the way that you give love, the way that you love is actually very similar to the way that your parents or your caregivers or the people that you raise you loved you. The ways that I love is by giving gifts and by acts of service and physical touch. The physical touch, I think, is a really big one for me because it has actually, I I was not given a lot of physical touch as a child. And I think that that's how I want to love and how I want to be loved. And that was so negligent in my life as a child in the ways that I needed it, that I need to give it and I need to receive it. But when it comes to gifts and it comes to acts of service, those were two things that I was given so much of. I was always given little gifts from my dad and my mom was definitely very much an acts of service type of person. So both my parents were always giving gifts, whether that was in the form of a card or a birthday cake or a birthday gift or those little gifts that my dad would always give myself and my siblings. And the acts of service, like my mom always cooking and always cleaning things up, my dad always, you know, fixing something or putting gas in my car, fixing my tire or something like that. So I was always given love through gifts and through acts of service that now as an adult, they're actually at the bottom of my list. It's almost like your childhood fulfilled that love language for you. So you do it outwardly because you know how to do it because that's how you were loved so much. That's how what you were raised on. So I was raised on acts of service and gifts. So now when I go love people, I learned how to love like that because that's how I was loved. So now I love people like that. So I love people through acts of service and gifts. The ways that you want to be loved and the ways that you need to be loved are the ways that you were not loved as a child. For me, touch is so big. Touch is so big. I very rarely remember being hugged or touched or like caressed, I guess, as as a child very much. So that's one of the ways that I absolutely crave the most in any of my relationships. Like hugging, kissing, touching, all of the all of the above for me is so big, but also quality time. Quality time is really big for me. And I think this one is because as a child I wasn't I didn't feel as though I was listened to a lot and I didn't have the chance to build a lot of friendships and relationships with people. So it was so important and it is still so important to me as an adult to have quality time with people so that I am able to build on the relationships that I have, whether that's with my significant other, with my family or with my friends. Think about that for a second. What did you not receive in regards to love as a kid? Which of the love languages did you not receive as a child? Are those the love languages that you want to receive now? How about the love languages that you did receive as a child? Are those the love languages that you give to others? Is that how you love others now as an adult? I'm curious. And is there a love language that you love to give to others, but also want that type of love back? Are there any of the love languages that are the same for you? Like how mine is touch. My theory is, (laughs) my theory is that this is the love language, the one that is for giving and receiving. This is your love language that you truly needed the absolute most as a child, but were not given it. And there were always some pain points and struggles around this love language. 
wondering if there is some truth behind zodiac signs, your astrology chart and the love languages, like which ones really resonate with you and your rising sign or your sun sign. I think that love is really going to have to do with your Venus sign because that is the representation of love. Venus is love. And whatever sign you have Venus in, I think is really going to be the sign that is going to dictate how you love and what you love. So my Venus and my seven, is actually in my seventh house, which is Pisces. So if you're a Pisces, let's start from, let's start backwards in the Zodiac. If you're a Pisces, I'm going to say gift giving and physical touch are really big for you. Gift giving because of the creativity behind a Pisces. So whether that's giving gifts or receiving gifts, like there needs to be so much creativity in this gift. There needs to be so much thought in this gift. And I think a lot of people who have that love language of gifting and even the love language of words of affirmation, I'm sending you guys lots of love. If you have, if that's how you love to be loved through gift giving or through words of affirmation, it's okay to have those as your love language. I'm letting you know. Because it's not about the gift per se. It's not, you know, it's the thought that counts. That's not how it is. Gift giving is the thought that counts. Like the thought, the creativity, and the process that was put into this gift. It truly is the thought that counts. Not the thought of just anything, of someone just giving you anything. It is truly the thought and the creativity of the gift that's being given to you. As for words of affirmation, sometimes words of affirmation really isn't just a compliment. Words of affirmation is a lot deeper than that. It's it's a poem or it's a card with a long message written in it. Both of those are so much deeper than that. And before I go on a tangent, <laughs> Pisces is touch and it is gift giving. So if you have a Venus in Pisces, let me know how you feel about that. If you have a Venus in Aquarius, I'm going to say quality time and possibly words of affirmation. Aquarius are so innovative and tech focused that if you have a an Aquarius Venus or even an Aquarius rising, I think that those two are going to be so important. You're going to love like the jibber jabber of like the conversation and the words of affirmation back to each other or someone complimenting something really cool that you thought of or something really awesome that maybe you're working on. In regards to quality time, you're going to want that time so you can kind of pick at each other's brains and and just spend time together. Like that's going to be so much more important than any of the other things. If you are a Venus in Capricorn, Capricorn is definitely going to be acts of service and quality time. Whenever I think of Capricorn, I do think of my dad. So I would even say possibly gift giving could be part of it. But whenever I think of Capricorns, my dad had so much Capricorn in his chart himself. And Capricorns are very money oriented. They're also very like realistic and, and down to earth. And I think that acts of service, doing things for each other and quality time, spending time together are the two, I think all of the love languages are pretty realistic, but I think those two are so realistic in building on a relationship that just makes sense for sad for for Capricorn. When it comes to Sagittarius, I'm going with touch and words of affirmation. Sagittarius are definitely a fiery sign and they're very forward. Right? They're very fun. They could be a little petty, but I think that they like the 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 jabber. <laughs> <laughs> the jabber of of words of affirmation and and chatting with people. I I have never met a Sagittarius that isn't sarcastic and isn't funny in that way. Like that doesn't have dark humor or dry humor 
if that, or sarcastic humor. So I think that that is a perfect description of Sagittarius. I want to say physical touch for Scorpio and quality time. But the physical touch I don't think is always there. I think you have to be so close with a Scorpio, especially a Scorpio Venus, to have that type of connection with them. But the quality time is going to be so important in having to then get to that physical touch love language. I think Libra and Taurus are very similar in that physical touch is going to be physical touch is going to be a big one. But even more so with the Libra and gift giving. Easy. Gift giving 100%. Libras are just so flirty, so aesthetic, so vibey. And I think that gifts, as long as there's so much thought and creativity put in them, I think Libra all the way, gift giving, 100%. And physical touch because of that like flirtiness, that flirty vibe. Libra Venus, I could, oh, if you have a Libra Venus, you are a flirty motherfucker. (laughs) I feel it for you. I feel it. Then we go on to Virgo. Virgos are so realistic. I think that a Virgo Venus, actually Nick is a Virgo Venus. So if I'm going off of Nick and any other Virgo Venuses that I know and just the realism of a Virgo, a Virgo is going to give me acts of service, definitely acts of service actually, acts of service and potentially quality time acts of service for sure because it's just a very realistic thing that when you love someone you do things for them and that is the epitome of virgo very down to earth but it is a very service driven like do things for others kind of zodiac sign so i can see it a leo venus words of affirmation all the way possibly physical touch but i think words of affirmation is definitely really important there a leo really wants to hear you tell them that they're amazing tell them that they are beautiful and basically compliment them all day long but to they just want to hear sweet nothings they just want to hear all of the sweetness from you they truly do cancers big on the quality time very big on the quality time. Cancers want to spend time with you, dedicated time with you. They want to be in this bubble with you. They want no one else in it and they want to learn absolutely everything they possibly can about you. (laughs) Geminis are going to be gift giving and acts of service. Mm Mm-hmm. You know how they say Geminis are like two-faced or like two different people, but they're the same. They're still twins, right? Acts of service, it's like service and gifts. If we talk about things that we can purchase, we can purchase a service and we can purchase a gift. We can purchase a massage or we can purchase a massage gun. That is a Gemini through and through. So a Gemini, the way that they want to be loved is they want you to purchase them a massage gun But they also, especially if this Gemini likes a little physical touch, they want you to purchase them a massage gun, but they also want you to purchase the couple's massage so you both can go and get a massage. It's like a a win-win right there. Taurus is definitely gift-giving. Taurus love the gifts. And I think quality time is also there. I mentioned before physical touch, but I think I'm going to solidly go with quality time and gifts for Taurus. Taurus are, (sighs) Taurus are very down to earth people and I could just picture a Taurus Venus most especially loving spending quality time just, just laying on the couch with the person that they love or just doing something chill with the person that they love or people that they love. Aries, I'm gonna say a sprinkle of physical touch, a sprinkle of acts of service, and a sprinkle of words of affirmation for Aries. Aries is a very fiery sign. It's a very impulsive sign. It is the first sign of the zodiac, and it's it's basically like beginning 
everything. I think that the, like an Aries Venus would be so full of love that it would be, I almost want to say everything for, for Aries. I think the only thing that it wouldn't be is like quality time. So you'd have an evenness of all four and then second priority would be quality time. So those are all my thoughts on the zodiac signs, all 12 of the zodiac signs and what your love language is. Let me know if any of those feel true in accordance with your sun sign, which would be kind of like your ego. Which one, which of the love love languages fuels your ego? Your rising sign, which is truly who you are deep inside, like which love language do you deeply, deeply want? Or your Venus sign, which one do you just, this is, this is how you feel loved. This is how you feel loved. Or you could even go off of your moon sign and say, this is the love language that really makes me feel emotionally connected to the person that I have this relationship with. So however you experience love or however you give love to others, however you love others, I hope that this Valentine's Day, this Galentine's Day, this entire month, you're able to give yourself a little bit more love and give others a little bit more love too. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Self Love Archives and the Love Languages. Love, love, love. I love love. <laughs> I have been loving myself a little bit more by giving myself just a little bit more time to plan and put together these podcast episodes, but also some really exciting things behind the scenes. So as of today, we are going to be sharing and posting. Well, I am going to be sharing posting because I am a one woman show. You are going to be seeing the Self Love Archives podcast episodes posted every other week. So you will not see me next weekend, but don't fret. Don't worry. You will see me on the 25th, which the 25th actually is also a really, really exciting day. I am hosting an event with a local flower shop here in New Jersey. So if you are listening to this podcast and you are in the area, tickets are still available as of today, as of this episode going live. So if you are interested in attending there are going to be so many amazing New Jersey small businesses there, including one of my favorite local coffee shops, the flower shop themselves. You'll get to be able to make a little five stem bouquet to take home with you. There will be a tarot reader, hair tinsel. When you go and purchase the ticket, you get to choose which one you want to do, either tarot or hair tinsel. And there is going to be a bunch of small bites as well as ear seating, which is the acupuncture for your ears. And it's so cool. And actually it's so cute too, because they put little like rhinestone, almost like beads in your ear in certain areas for, you know, certain different things like digestion, um, stress, whatever, whatever it may be. And then we are also going to have a really, really amazing goodie bag that I am putting together myself, actually sponsored by the Self Love Archives. So there are so many really amazing brands in there, including brands like Poopery, It Cosmetics, Koki, and also some really great coupons inside the bags for some local businesses in New Jersey. And one person that purchases a ticket to the event will also win a free full three course brunch and a bottle of champagne for this really amazing brunch spot called C'est La Vie in Red Bank here in New Jersey. So if you are in the New Jersey area or if you want to travel a little bit for this event, I would absolutely love you for it. I will give you all of my love languages, all the hugs in the world. <laughs> I would absolutely love for you to be there and to make it so I hope to have so many more events like this in the future with the self-love archives it is my biggest goal to host more and more events just like this one this one's in honor of my 30th birthday because that is coming up the next episode you will hear from me on the 25th which is the day of the event which is also going to be my birthday episode I have no idea what we're going to be talking about that day but I'll figure it out Maybe something about birthdays and how I always find myself bawling my eyes out every single birthday I ever 
<laughs> I hope that's not the case for you, but if it is, then you're going to relate to this podcast episode. <laughs> But if you can make it to the event on the 25th, I will love you for it. All the information is going to be in the description, the show notes down below. So make sure to check that out to see all the information and where you can purchase tickets. And I will see you guys not next week, but the week after that at 12 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday. I love you a ton. I hope you learn to love yourself a little bit better according to your own love language, but I hope that this helps you understand your love languages, the ways that you want to be loved and the ways that you experience love, and also the ways that you love others, as well as the ways that others experience love and the ways that they love you. Happy Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. Give yourself a little extra love this week. I love you tons. I'll see you soon. Thank you.